This 1952 Packard is a really cool car. Has a lot of unique features, chock full of character. Has a powerful 288 straight eight in the power barn there. Plenty of zip, get a guy out of town. Backed by a bolt action transmission, lots of fun to drive. This one even has brakes. But as you can see, it just doesn't look that good right now. Has a very snoozy retirement Craigslist feel about it. And we're gonna fix that. We're gonna do it without breaking the bank on a budget. I'm talking tires, wheels, interior, exhaust. We're even gonna bring the paint around with Vice Grip Garage's brand new high gloss wipe on clear coat system. And this thing is gonna look awesome. Now I've only got tonight to do it. So let's get started. Well, it's been a while since this car's been on the program. If you've been around for a minute, you recognize this, but I picked this up last winter. Had I been off the road, I forget, but it was many, many years. Guy did get her fired up and running. In fact, we took it to look at another project car that I ended up passing on, thanks to your guys' advice. Good call. Except you, Larry. I couldn't understand what you was, what you was saying, but that's okay. I appreciate it anyway. Long story short, the engine in this runs great. I don't understand it. The thing just, you could balance a nickel on the head. And I ain't kidding you. I did put a different fuel, make it happen around it, and do quite a bit of tuning after the fact. But the good news is, that's fine. We're going to have to do things a little bit differently today. As you can see, the car is kind of wet. I brought this down from Hubcap Hills. That was a fight getting it in here. As you can see, I had the bombed through some tree rows and got stuck 37 times. So it's currently leaking mud and water all over the shop here. That's okay, we'll soak that up with the back rag here. We're gonna have to do things out of order is what I'm trying to say to you here. First, we're gonna run this outside. We need to wash this down and scrub it very, very good in preparation for the wipe on clear coat I'm gonna be doing on this. That way it's in here drying. It's about 2.3 Celsius warmer in the shop than outside. But the biggest thing is it's dry. We could do the other stuff and then when it's dry we'll get back to the paint. I'm going to show you in here what I'm going to do to clean this thing up because well there's a severe thunderstorm out and we got a tornado warning. So I'm out here just kind of playing cars. You know you can hear me in here, is what I'm saying. Okay, stuff. Where did I put stuff? I cannot wait to see what this thing looks like glossy. It has been repainted, I believe, in the quarter panels. Yep, sure. Maybe in the doors. But this up here seems to be original. Nonetheless, we got some rust color showing through, some primer, a couple different colors of salmon, we'll call it. Here and there, like back here on this corner, obvious repaint. Someone got a couple whiskey dents in her, I think, and strained her out at some point or another. But what you can't really see until you get very close is it's extremely dirty. There is a ton of just moldish black dirt, mud, soot, soil, earth. I don't know, it's not paint is what I'm saying, okay? Here's the fingerprints from putting the jump box on up in Hubcap Hills. So we got to scrub this thing. Now, some people like to do the Comet wash or the Ajax wash, and that's fine. If you want to keep sprinkling stuff on and have a bucket full of water, and stop it. I use these. Okay, SOS, you find them in the kitchen aisle or the dollar store, whatever. It already has all the fixings in it. Wet the car down, scrub with this. You're gonna get bubbles and such. This fine steel wool, it's quad zero. You can even use this on the glass. I ain't kidding you, or the stainless, I promise you. Or the chrome, don't matter. That might not get you home, by the way. This is gonna clean it up, okay? Then, 
per the constructions, which I'll show you here later, we're going to take some of this gray scotch Bright. Yeah, they make gray. I did, it's a true story. Here it is. I can't believe it, but I'm looking at it right here. This is ultra fine. And when the paint is wet, we're going to take this, and this is also going to help essentially lightly sand and smooth a lot of this out in preparation for the paint product. It's a, it's a clear coat, but you just wave it on. So any of these big ridges or bumps, it's going to amplify them, you know. So we want to try to clean and smooth all this up, plus any grease, oils, grime. We want to remove that so we get some good chemical adhesions and whatnot. So let's roll this outside. I'm going to scrub on it. Look how dirty this is. Just cleaning this is going to make a huge difference. And then we'll wheel her back in. What in the devil is going on here? I don't know. Maybe I'll mop that up too while it's drying. Probably not. I think my left leg can get that and my right shoulder can clean that up. Listen to this thing fire up. Keep in mind, I've been sitting in the trees for a year. I drove it up here, obviously, but I don't even think it's warm yet. I just... Someone explain that to me. You can't. Oh, add to the to-do list. We gotta clean all the glass, too. guys done scrubbing on the car out there I'm gonna let her blow dry winds going about 912 knots right now so I'm trying to clean up this 47 gallons of mud water and then we'll wheel her back in and I don't know there is a lot to do might I say but we'll get at her how come I can never get these mop heads to mop and just smears. Okay. Can't see nothing with this headliner. Hanging in my teeth. I don't know. Straight back here? I don't know. <laughs> uh, right there. Boy, this engine runs good. We'll take a gander at the paint here. Still got to dry. So we really need to avoid that water just popping out at us here and there. But you can see it's a lot cleaner, but a lot more flat or chalky, and that's okay. But I wanted to talk to you about a couple things here. With those SOS pads, a guy is able to bring out things like this. Patina is already extremely unique. They're all one of a kind, right? But when you get in with an SOS pad, and you start bringing out different characteristics and things like that, you're really making a one-off design. And I know some of you don't even like the patinas and that's okay, but I know you can appreciate someone expressing their creativity, I guess you can say. And that's what's really fun about patina cars. Now, something I wanna mention, these streaks, like here, there's another similar one on this side. I intentionally left. Look at that. Now I could have easily removed that with the SOS pad, but look how much character that adds. And then I got into areas, showed you a few up on the hood, like this here, this started popping through. So you can apply more pressure and really start bringing that color out. Here, right here on the trunk, really got into her, you know. Over here, I wanted to kind of make it match. We're gonna do some more work on it as well with a DA, I think. And we're gonna have to do that later. And we'll talk about that down the road, but we got kind of a mess here 
we're gonna have to deal with. But for now, we're gonna move on to the interior. Now be warned, when a guy says we're doing interior on Vice Grip Garage, that means like, you know, spray foam and blankets and license plates and stuff like that. And that's all we gotta do to this rig, bring it around. I think it's gonna be really comfortable. Look at this for a second. The seats in here are brand and new. We got a little bit of a tear over here, but look, they've already been recovered. We can clearly see that. The back seat is beautiful. Where you put your hind ender is beautiful. All the springs are in great shape. The door panels aren't even really that bad. The card's got a little bit of water damage, but guy can get his elbow up in here. All this works. So we're good. What we're gonna focus on, running a vacuum through here, and then we got some weight reduction holes we're gonna try to cover up really quick. The biggest thing, is this what and what is happening here this used to be duct tape up and there was some wood sticks and wire and stuff like that when i purchased the rig but it's ripping it's in poor condition unfortunately it shrunk so bad the listings have shrunk even if we try to stretch this it's not going to make it all the way back with the bows in it and everything so i think what we're going to do What's this? We're gonna to continue to rip that rotten thread. See if we can stick that up in the ceiling somehow, or maybe even cut it up on this bow, or take the whole thing out. I don't really know yet, but we can't have it doing this. We gotta be able to, to haul, you know, some ladies around, first of all, or some, you know, packs of cold snacks. But a guy can't back up. This is the biggest concern. And then we'll vacuum and clean and whatever else. Maybe one more plate right in there. Region. Interior. We're going to call it done. It's able to get all that shoe polish and stuff off on the outside too. Anyway, hindsight being 1312 or a good set of spectacles. I think I'm going to go ahead and finish professionally removing this headliner first because I've got all sorts of insulation and mouse houses and acorns and newspaper and lot work from a barn falling. So there's no sense in running a mouse sucker through here and then doing it again. You know what I mean? Okay, what have we got? How are we gonna do this? What's the plan? I don't know. Where do we start? No clue. Hmm. My concern, well, that was my concern right there. Even if I get this out, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it to stay because this bow, she's bogged out. She's bogging deep. Uh, okay. Oh my goodness. What in the devil's going on? Okay. See? Uh, it's in my retina. All right, bring it up here, and we'll cut this. See how I'm cutting it? We're cutting it over here, then back, and then... Oh. Okay. Can a guy... Well, this was, this is what was blowing around. In the rig. When we was trying to drive it, you know. So, good news is, we're fixing that anyway. Uh, boy, she's locked. That was easy, you know. Oh my goodness. I got more level 12 mouse housage up here. Just, I just took at least 14 months off my life. Worth it. Okay. Everything is, everything seems to be going fine. Nope. Uh. Okay. Uh. 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 What's that? 
don't let, but okay. Well, we're making it. Nice. What a difference that alone just made. Went ahead and vacuumed everything out, scraped down the ceiling best I could, got all the loose pieces out of that. I'm hoping nothing blows around in here. You know what I mean? Headliner's a little baggy right here, but I think it's gonna be out of the way enough to cruise it around anyway. Floor is pretty well shot, but we're gonna try to get some rigidity back in there if we can. Put some leather treatment on this whatever material this is and boy a lot more soft cleaned up really nice it's too bad about this little rip and that rip over there i think i'm also going to put some plates in up here feller before me did some platage with some like hvac tape he got it pretty well but i think we can sprinkle in some over here as well a couple over there that's what we're going to start on next Crew cabs leaking ice cube juice. I think I might got a hole radiator. Uh oh. She's over in the service bay. I'll get to that a couple of years from now. Anywho, I got a bunch of floor pans laid up here for a 52 Packard. I got them on sale at www.thefolks that watch the show sent them to me.com. I got some Texas. I like to use pears when I can. We'll throw them in. Maryland. Okay, we'll use them. I got some Georgia ones. Fulton County, New Jersey. That's a fallen law enforcement officer's plate. I think I might use that one on the captain's side. And I got some backups over here too, some Illinois, South Carolina. Didn't they fly a plane or something back in the day? I don't know. Anyway, I wanted to show you this one. This is exceptional. From the Kansas Corporation Commission, Topeka, Kansas. Okay. Postmaster. Bunch of notes on here. Look at this thing. Brand and new. Never used. 1959 license plate. And this isn't a repop. This is the real deal license plate in mint condition. Very, very cool. Thanks for sending that over. All right, well, we'll head over. I'm gonna get my welding helmet, also known as nothing, and the welder, also known as just a drill with some self-tappers. And we're gonna blast these floor pans in quick, get them arranged up, see if we can put some rigidity back on that floor. No, probably not. It's worth a shot though. Yeah, I suppose. By the way, I just want to mention, I don't mean any disrespect by putting this here, you know, with feet going over it. I just want it the most noticeable plate, right? If we're going to use one. So I think I'm going to snag that one in like that. And then maybe Mary Land. Can we just... Can we do something like that? Actually... Do we, do, like, do we do that way? No, you're right. I'm sorry. OCD guys just about had a meltdown. We'll do it that way. And we'll put the Texas, which are very thin, by the way, over there. And then maybe Georgia there. Georgia over there. I'm just going to use, I get this at Tractor Supply. It's like 24 bucks, I think. Pretty good deal. Comes with the bits and everything. Ring, ring. I'm gonna use these little fellers and uh, weld them in. Okay, and then the sealant we're using is nothing. And then we're gonna join those with the rest of them with nothing as well. Oh, wait, I forgot. Welding. Oh, got to adjust my gas a little bit, I think. Oh, that will happen sometimes. Bzzz. Oh, there we go. 
That one's much better. There we go. Sure. Good enough for the girls that we date. Floor's patched. Turned out good. That one's nice. This one's great. That one really bit in. And that's what you're looking for is a really hot weld like that. These novelty plates, stop. Those don't, those don't work. Texas, drinker side, looks just pro. Same with the Maryland, Georgia side. Not bad. Now we got, you know, the feet ain't gonna flintstone it, is what I'm saying anyway. Boy, these seats turned out nice. Okay, I think the interior is, I think we're gonna call it done. Looks pretty good. I mean, for a cruiser. Click. They don't make them like they used to. Well, based on the interior, you know, restoration we just did, I think you guys know where we're headed here. We're not spending any money we don't have to. We're keeping it to a bare minimum again. We don't want to break the bank here. We just want to make a fun cruiser or a hot rod, something we could throw the family in, go get some ice cream, sneak down to the tavern. I don't know your schedule. I'm just saying, let's not just blow money and use a parts cannon. So up next, I think we got to crawl under this thing and address the exhaust. Now it runs really well. It's just really, really quiet. And we're talking a 288 Thunderbolt straight eight under there. We gotta let that thing breathe. We gotta hear it run. I got just the thing and it rhymes with Sawzall. Yeah. What's that? I mean, yeah, we fired up. Oh, you wanna hear what it sounds like now yeah, you betcha. We'll do that. That's a good idea. Neutralis. Use the key. I think it's to like a Massey Ferguson. Look at that. I mean, I don't understand it, but I can respect it. Just great running. I don't know how much gas I got in here, actually. See what I mean? That doesn't say... You know, I'm gonna run down your Chevy or Ford. Yeah, we can fix that, I think. Oh my, 17 gallons of gas on the ground. We'll ignore that. Step one is bend everything you can find. Try to get the vehicle up into the air. I needs it in his teeth, or at least enough to get his barrel chest under here. Good thing is, these old cars have a frame like a mobile home, and I ain't kidding. Don't believe me? Go slide up a piece of your skirting and look under there, and then look under this Packard. Psh, told you. What just, hello? Is it my time? What just happened? Huh. Look at this muffler. Thing's longer than Charlie Sheen's rap sheet. It was all the way up there. Any hoos. Look at this frame. She's X'd up and boxed and crossed and other things and there's stuff also hooked to it and see what I was talking about? Yep. Definitely there. Frame looks really good. Got a pinion seal leak, so we're going to pretend we didn't see that at all. Definitely don't put that on the list. Bring our attention right back to this. So, that's going to be full of rust and rot. Try to get a blot A up in there. Snip. Blot A up in here. Snip. Boop. Boop. More HPs, better sound. Okay, yep, yeah, right up in the in here. Okay, safety squirts. <laughs> Need bigger squinters. What about if I cut from this direction? Can't get up in there. Do we gotta angleize it? Ha, <laughs> <laughs>
everything is fine. Oh, I can hear my hair. Okay. There we go. Over here. Oh. Well, for crying into the mud. Never seen such a thing. Okay. Oh, she's blowed up even. Not much of a turb ski muffler. I know what you're thinking. Where do I get the precision and the swiftness? This is years of practice. Nope. There's rust in my eardrum. Good news is the mufflator is out. This is just, I wonder if we should cut the tailpipe off. All right. You talked me into it. Got the pipe later off with the mufflator. Look at this. The Midas. U.S. patent. 1839, I don't know what that says. It's really old. Psst. Coming down Bay 4! Oh yeah, still just me. There we go. Whoa. All right, let's fire it up. See what we got now. Okay. Neutralis, pretty sure. Oh yeah, that's what we needed. That ain't bad. I mean, guy can hear it, but it ain't obnoxious. It doesn't sound like a grain truck. All right, custom exhaust. Boop, boop. Bring that off the checklist that I don't have. Listen, fellers and fellas, I've done this hundreds and hundreds of times, and that's not like a humble brag or anything like that. I'm just telling you, learn from my mistakes. If you're on a tight budget and you want to make a big difference with your hot rod or project, don't put a chrome air cleaner on it or a boom boom stereo system, okay? Biggest change you're gonna make that makes or breaks a vehicle is the tires and wheels. 99.2367498887 repeating percent of the time. And that's where we're going next. Now, some of you may not have a hot credit card or some gift cards or stack of cash to buy a set of wheels and I get that, been there many times. So I'm gonna show you a trick where you can snazz up just some steel wheels or I'm gonna show you here in a minute what I picked up for this, which is just some also cheap steel wheels. Slightly different though. Let's jack this up, bust a couple off first. Of course, everyone's different when building a rig. We all got our opinions and that's great. You've probably noticed for me though, especially with 50s cars, I really like a pretty consistent, although I try to do builds differently each time, look. And that's the, you know, are we going to fist fight? Or is this guy going to rob the, you know, quickies mart? Or are we drag racing? You know, it's a bandit car. You just, you're confused. Guy doesn't know what's happening. And that's the look I want to go for this is, clearly it was a 50s mid-luxury car but I want to add some pep, kind of make it look like a hot rod. So, I'll show you a couple ways to do that. How, what is, why is that side so much heavier, I ask? No one answers. Well, that's typical. Boy, this floor is getting dirty. Bolts, not nuts. That's the sign of quality right there. Yep. All right, little devil. I'll bust this tire loose quick. Ha! 
Conquer! Adam says. Sure. Okay, we're talking Craigslist wheel rebuilding, <laughs> to which I've done a lot. Listen, if you just really don't care, don't even take them off the car. Just sure. If you're, you know, good at your job, you might do the old playing card trick. You take 14 hours and you stick a bunch of playing cards around here and flay them up. That'll work. But listen. A, you just wasted a good deck of cards. You probably could have won $48 in poker that night, especially if you invite that one friend over. He just can't figure it out. You always get overspray on it, and most importantly, when you do the playing card trick, you can't paint the lip or the edge of the wheel down here. You miss it, no matter how hard you try. And you could jam license plates in here and card stock, anything you want with the wheel, beat it. Sure. Here's how I do it. Knock the bead off on the front. You don't need a tire machine to do it. Take the valve stem out, walk around on the tire, boop, done. Hammer, whatever. Get it off, that's what I'm saying. Make a big trash bag with this one. Lay it over the wheel. Sure. Find center-ish. Looks about right there. The side of the hub to the edge of the wheel. We're going to cut that off. Don't need it. Get it out of here. Make it gone. Hey, we got a circle. Take that circle, and you're gonna work it around. Just like this. Now your wheel is just like it's at the barber shop. You ain't gonna get over spray on nothing. You can get that paint way down in the edge here. No overspray either. You just come in here and do the thing. The black, in my opinion, is the way to go on this rig. One might argue silver. Some might even say bright red. I guess it's just whatever you're into. But this is just an example and I'll show you here in a second. But a great way to get complete coverage on your wheel. Cheap, easy, and professional rebuild. I mean, I lost the receipts, but this thing's powder coated. You know what I mean? Guess what I'm talking about there is you can get all the way down around. Of course, I just might have missed a couple areas, but. And then when you're done, kaboom. Throw some air back in it. Brand new powder coated wheel. Well, that's one way, but this is the route I'm going. I got these gloss black smoothies. They're kind of a, what is this? Dual drilled pattern. Should fit in the offset, it's gonna be tight, but it should fill up the wheel wells, make it look a lot better. And they came with free poverty caps. So they're gonna kind of look like that. I'm gonna go around back. I got some tires. I actually bought for a different project, ended up not using. This is a perfect time for that. And of course, they're white lighter. Okay, I need this here, don't I? Just can't beat an old set of Cooper Cabras. That's what I'm gonna be running. Now there are tremendously cheaper tires out there. I just bought these for a different project, didn't use them, but on the books, they're already expensed against that rig. So for this one, they're kind of free. You know what I mean? But go on the Evil Bay or the Jungle website, put your tire size in, sort by cheapest first, boom. Pick you up a set there and, you know, whatever you're looking for, I, guess. I don't know. Just keep in mind, the wider you go, the more spendy they get. I'll tell you that much right now. All right, time to get these mounted. I'm guessing it's this one. Yeah, maybe? Yeah, I think so. Okay, good. 
Boom. Oh yeah. Get the poverty cap. And there. Oh. That looks good. A lot better. Guy ain't even got her on the ground yet. Already oh, looks 58 million percent better. Gonna go ahead and wrestle the other three on. It's a Fiscus Royale because, well, the tires are a little too narrow for the wheels, but we're trying to use what we can around here. So let me fight these other three on. We'll get her back down on all four paws. See what this thing looks like. I think it's gonna look really good. Well, the tires, wheels, and poverty caps are on, and talk about a transformation. It has completely changed this car from an old snoozy, you know, going to town grandpa rig. She's looking a little peppy, more of a muscle car hot rod, which is exactly what we're going for. And now I'm kind of looking at the stance. I got some ideas there too. And we're not done on the transformation front either. We've still got the paint to deal with, but I think I have decided to go ahead and let it sit overnight and completely dry. I'm still seeing water dripping on the moldings and stuff like that, and I'm trying to chase it around with air, and I'm just making a mess. So I think I'm just gonna let it sit and dry. No need to rush that. We'll be back, we'll get the paint done. I'm thinking we might even lower the front end a little bit. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. All right, time to clean up. Packard's back in the shop here. It's dried off, started taping it actually. I'll get to that in a minute. But I wanted to talk about the gloss and why we're doing these products. And there's gonna be a lot of questions, right? So let's just try to work through some of this. First of all, why this product? Why am I doing this? Well, if you've watched Vice Grip Garage more than one time, you guys know that I love helping people. It's my favorite thing ever. And since the beginning of the channel, it's been you know, tips and tricks and shortcuts and budget ways to do things and just quick ways to get things done because I just like helping people. And that progressed to a homebrew way to kind of make patina shine and pop. And that's that kind of mixture that I shared quite a few times on the channel. We had pretty good success with it. Well, that led to thousands and thousands and thousands of emails of, hey, am I mixing this right? And what was those ingredients? And why is this so sticky? Am I doing it right? And can I put it on this? And it just blew up our inbox. So I kind of stopped showing it because we couldn't respond to all these inquiries on it. And that led to, well, we should recreate the shine juice and something that we could sell that's ready to go. Now the shine juice you're seeing today is not the home brew WD-40 and whatever. It's way beyond that. In fact, it's no less than 20 ingredients in that can. And they all work together to give you a non-sticky finish that doesn't attract dirt and bugs and so on. Beyond that, we actually have gloss, matte, and satin clear coat. Now this is actual clear coat, okay? Urethane clear coat. Now some people will say, you can't clear coat patina or rust or any of these things, it doesn't work. And technically they're correct if you're thinking about traditional automotive clear coat. They're designed to have chemical adhesion meaning they're supposed to be sprayed onto a prepped, sanded base coat, right? Your color coat, it's a two-part system. You got your base, and then you're supposed to lay on your clear coat. Well, people started taking the clear coat and gobbing it over rust and bare metal and all this stuff, and they started having issues. That's because it's not designed to do that. Now, this is formulated specifically for mechanical adhesion. Long story short, it's designed specifically to go over patina paint and rust and rough areas and surfaces and bare metal and you can even put it on wood and vinyl stickers and you name it. People have had great success with it and I'm gonna show you that today. Now, you can wipe this on. We're gonna show you that. Super simple, quick, easy. Or you can also spray it on. 
And that's why we have the roof here taped off, and I'm going to explain why. Now, again, this is very surface tolerant, and what I mean by that is all this imperfection, this bumpiness. Remember earlier we were kind of sanding this down a little bit, trying to get it somewhat smooth. We don't really have to. In fact, look at this roof here. It's very rough, right? But you could just wipe this on. It's self-leveling. It's going to look great. However, that being said, if you want a really, really brilliant shine, obviously the smoother the surface, the more it's going to shine because it reflects more. Now, on this roof, I can't get my belly. You know, this is a, this is a big, I can't even reach the center, right? So what I'm going to do is spray the roof, so you can see that process. Mix it up, pour it in a cup, spray the roof, and then we're going to show you how to wipe it on. We'll wipe on the rest of the car. Now you could do one or the other, you can mix it up, it doesn't really matter. It all goes on the same, you're gonna get the same result. What I'm gonna be using for a gun, of course, is the cheapest Harbor Freight gun. You guys have seen me use this quite a few times. You don't have to use fancy guns and all that stuff. I do run a filter on it, try to keep some water out of it, but it's just spray a coat, that's, that's it, let it dry. So what we're going to start is we're going to go ahead and use some wax and grease remover. I just use prep wall or pretty much anything. going to wipe this down, make sure all the fingerprints and stuff is off. Might be some residual stuff on here from scotch writing it. Clean that up, and then we're going to mix up a cup, and we'll go ahead and spray this thing and see what it looks like. I think this is going to look really neat. We've got some grays. There's a lot of gray over there. We've got some dark brown. We've got rust back here. We've got some rust coming through here. There's a couple patches of bare metal. Pretty much everything. I'm not sure what that is right there, but eh, we're gonna clear right over top of that as well. I'm gonna wipe the roof off here. Again, just using this wax and grease remover, lint-free rag. Just gonna get in here and clean this up. Now watch this because I can almost guarantee you this is gonna turn kind of that same color just from picking up See? So we don't want that in our clear. Go through and clean all this up, and then we'll be back with you. We'll mix up a cup and get the spray in. So we've got our mixing cup here and our two parts. And the constructions say eight to one. So that's very simple. Eight parts to one, right? So if you look at this cup, I just wanted to show you this. And we don't have to mix it all at once. You just slow down, enjoy the process, take your time. We're gonna go ahead and mix this cup up. It's a 20 ounce cup on the gun. Whatever's left, we can go ahead and use for wipe on application later, but don't, you know, you don't have to mix the whole thing in a big jug at one time, okay? So all we have to do is just run this up to uh, we'll go five, and then we're going to run little guy up to the five next to it, and that gives us eight to one. And if you go across, that's going to almost give us 20 ounces, which should just fill that cup, which is going to be more than enough to spray the roof. Whatever's left, like I said, we could just go ahead and use that for a wipe on application. But it's that easy, guys. Just dump it in, dump that in. We'll give her just a little stir. Dump it in that cup, hose it up, and get to spraying. All right, guys, here we go. Did a couple test spray patterns here. Really long roof, so I gotta try to walk while spraying to get from glass to glass. This is gonna be really interesting. Don't laugh at me if I fall.
Wow, it goes on real easy. Easy as that. Now I gotta move my board box to the other side. Spray that side and we're done. Easy peasy. So this stuff is loaded with UV inhibitors. So whatever you see here, guys, it's gonna lock it in. Whatever you're looking at, it just seals it up, protects it. I mean, in this case, it took, you know, 60 years, whatever math is, to look like this. We're just gonna lock it in. Over on this quarter panel here, see this paint? Even though I scotch brighted it, it's just, it keeps chipping back. A lot of areas here. You'll be surprised at how much this stuff covers and seals, but some of these chunks are pretty big. And if we just cover over top of it and this chips off, then we're just gonna expose what's underneath. So, I'm gonna take some 400 on a DA and just real quick. And we can get some brown. We'll get more color to pop through anyway, which this side of the car really needs. There's not a lot over here, to be honest. So I'm going to sand this up really quick, and then we'll have to obviously clean it again, wipe everything down. And I'm trying to keep this rust streak, remember, from up here for some character. So i got to be a little bit careful there. I want to leave all this up here, but we got to address this. There we go, a little more character, smooth and good. Here's what I ended up with. Guy brought some more colors in. We got some black, some white, silverish, gray, pomegranate, salmon, maroon, brownish, silver, almond colors. And then this was fine, but I just felt like there was too much there. So I pop some of this in here. And again, you could do this with the quad zero steel wool tool when you're washing it. If you see something popping through like this, apply pressure, you can get some streaks, really make it, you know, unique, if you will. I know some of you are thinking, you know, this whole patina thing, it's not your handbag, paint the car already. And that's fine, but you have to remember, not everybody can afford 10, 12, $15,000 to paint a car. And this one, wouldn't be worth putting that money into. This is a really affordable way to just seal this thing up and make it look pretty cool at the same time. Did some over here as well. Added some more color in. Brought this out. We got some more bare metal popping through here. And I did a little bit up front there too. This is pretty well flashed off. Look at this. Moses sandals. It's looking good. All right, we're gonna go ahead and wipe this on now. We're gonna start with the hood, and then we'll, you know, fenders, doors, quarters, trunk. Just like washing a car when you paint, you always start with the roof, right? That's why we sprayed that first. Got my applicator pad here. The blue did out. Made sure there wasn't any lint or gunk or dust or dirt in here. Got that little paint tray over here. Just gonna soak up my applicator pad. Takes a little bit of practice to get the right amount in here but you guys will get the hang of it fairly quick. I'm going to kind of outline right here quickly under this, just like that. Start up here. We're just gonna get to work. Just gotta work pretty quickly here. Nice thin layers. Look at that. Clear coat going on. 
you make a mistake, let her sit. You can go back in 24 hours if you miss a spot or something like that. Try to resist the urge of going back and adding more product. You could just get yourself in a pickle. You know what I mean? Like right there, I got a little streak, but I just wiped that one on so I can go back and grab it quick. Also, if you have a spotter, someone that can hook their eyeball on this with you, that's also handy. There we go. I'm going to switch over to that side. There's your before and after. What a tremendous change that is. This is the cheapest and biggest transformation you can do to your rig, hands down. And maybe we'll put a happy little tree right over it. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, that would look pretty cool. Grew up next to a guy named Dick McGregor, had Christmas trees all over his Dodge truck. No one knew why, but it looked pretty cool. I'm just going to keep on rocking now, guys. Well, the guy's got the whole car wiped down back here. Man, it looks, I can't believe it. You know, shiny things scare me. And now this car actually scares me. I'm gonna wait about 20 minutes, let's try to touch. I'll peel all the tape and paper off of this thing and show you guys. You're gonna, you're gonna like this. So guy got to looking at the bumper here. She's peeling. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like, it's a chip like there. There's a, there's a little bit there, I think. So what I'm gonna do is take this bumper off and I'm gonna dip this and re-chrome it and put it back on. And I think it's gonna look a lot better that way. There we go. Yep, see? So the re-chroming process is, takes quite a while, but I think we can spritz it up a little bit here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Bumper rechroming. Fifteen bucks each. Oh. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah. Looking pretty good. Whoa. I mean my mind is I'm fully bottled at this juncture. This thing's hotter than a stolen set of 22s, and I ain't kidding ya. Now listen, it ain't perfect, you know? I got a sag on the other door, and you could see a couple areas where I was, maybe got a little thin, but we're not going for perfect. Look at the car, we're not going for perfect. We're just trying to seal what we have here, put a little sparkle on it, and boy, did we do that. In fact, I'm getting a little nervous, you know, with shiny things. And I ain't the salesman, okay? But if you're interested in maybe trying one of these, you can scoot over to vicegripgarage.com. There's also a link down there in the description. And also in the description is an email address. And if you shoot something over there, a question or concern or whatever, a nerd, I mean a smart person will get back to you that knows everything about this stuff. So we have people to help, okay? But what a change. Now that I'm looking at this thing, we ain't done yet. We gotta do something with the altitude attitude on this thing. I think the front end's gotta go down. So we're gonna do the right thing, get the gas axe out and do a little bit of an adjustment on the front here. And then my favorite part, we'll drive this through the hills of Tennessee. So as you can see, she's sitting pretty level now, which 
you know, that's fine. Some people probably just want to let her be. But I like a little rake in my classic cars, you know, where the back end's a little bit higher, especially since I put the correct size tires on it. It looks kind of different now. And my whole plan here is kind of that, you know, 50s muscle car-ish, cigar runner, drug runner, whatever you want to call it, kind of car. Cuban-ish, maybe, if that's a thing. But in order to achieve that, I need to get rid of that gap right there. Bring that down just a little bit, not a lot, inch and a half maybe, maybe two inches. And this thing is going to look just, uh, I mean, it's already looking really good. So unfortunately, looking closer, these springs are pretty well bagged out. We're probably going to have to heat all these coils and try to get them to collapse to even get anything out of this. We might get an inch if we're lucky. Normally there's a larger separation there and you only have to heat maybe two, and what ends up happening is they'll step down. So it'll come, bend down to the next one. Then you go to the next one, bend down to the next one, like that. But I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do very much here. Ignore everything that's worn out, okay? We just need to lower it. Well, y'all can keep an eye on this gap here, and we'll see if we can Bring this down just a little. Hopefully there's enough adjustment left on this bad boy. And by adjustment, I mean ability to melt or bend. Yeah. 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 Be sure to watch your brake lines now for Pete's sake. Don't heat up your shock too much. Some is full of oil. Oh, that guy does his Put a little weight on her. There we go. Boy, the spiders are running. Got all sorts of bugs being evicted here. Sorry, fellers! Just playing hot rod. I got one link ruined. Now I just gotta ruin the next one. Come on now. Give me a bam. Little. See that? It's good. Go for one more here. See if we can do three links. About a quarter inch each link. What is that? Three feet? Also, make sure your spring pockets aren't full of leaves. Been there before. That'll get you excited. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> what have we got? Oh, yeah. Seat. Seated in. Perfect. Now, this is the look I was going for. A little bit of rake, but don't worry. She ain't on the bump stops, so you still get the benefit of them blowing out shocks. See? Still gonna float down the road. All right, let's go jam this thing on the highway and enjoy it. This car really turned into something rad, and the best part, we did it on a budget. And it proves, yet once again, you don't have to have all the best parts or the shiny pieces or the new interior or a brand new paint job and this and that. Who cares what other people think about your project? After all, it's your car. Get out there, enjoy the thing, get it on the road. Take it to the cars and tequila, I mean cars and coffee. Take it to the car shows, you know, whatever, cruise the thing. Just use it, enjoy your vehicle. Don't be ashamed or shy, it is what it is. I know I'm not. And once again, I'm going to remind you, they won't work if you won't. So get out there and do something with your going to Foundry. Thank you guys for watching once again, and we'll see you very, very soon.